Hello out there. Hello, hello. Welcome to another TC Connor Photography video. I hope everyone is doing well and staying dry in this nasty, nasty wet weather that the whole country seems to be engulfed in. Pretty much, well, not the whole country, but pretty much in my area. So instead of, uh, again, missing out, because I don't like to get out in this kind of these kind of conditions, I am going to be staying inside here where it's nice, and we are going to be doing an edit on this cute little eastern gray squirrel. I used my 100 to 500 out in the backyard, and I've seen this little fella underneath the um, bird feeders up there, and he was just kind of lurking around on the ground searching for seeds here and there and at, at this point right here where he's looking pretty much directly at me or my area he decides to scamper off so I thought this was an interesting look here I'm just gonna zoom in and let y'all see this cute fella look at that cute little guy <laughs> so anyhow we're gonna do this recording or do the screen recording here for you of me doing an edit and uh, you can see up here, um, I had my 100 to 500 on, and uh, I was zoomed all the way out to 500, shutter speed 1 1,000th, uh, aperture f7.1, and the ISO was 800. And there's some noise in the image at that high ISO, you can see, but it's... Um, it don't bother me having that much because we are going to remove it. So after I open this in, uh, image up in Lightroom and I'm using Lightroom desktop, I switched my workflow from Lightroom Classic to using the Lightroom desktop. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of even getting away from that now. I just kind of open my image up in the Finder and go right to the folder. I have all my images on folders on an external drive. So sometimes I'm not even opening it up in Lightroom because I, when I click on it, it opens up into Camera Raw, and that's what I use anyway. But Lightroom's develop module, and to do the uh, the shortcut keys are different for Lightroom. You have to hit the E button, and then it takes you into the edit panel. Or you can just as easily click up here on there. And the first thing I do, and I'm, I'm trying to get better at doing this before I make the first adjustment on any of the sliders or anything or any of the tones, I look at the image and I kind of picture or, or kind of think about well, what, what in the image do I want other people to see? What is so special about this image that needs uh, more attention? What needs to be brought out? What needs to be kind of hidden away or backed off? What do I need to do to keep the viewer's attention and to direct the viewer's eye to the main subject, which in, in my case right here is this cute little eastern gray squirrel. So... Uh, and then the next thing I think of is, well, okay, how much of a image do they need to see? In other words, does it need to be cropped? What's in the foreground here? What's in the background? None of none of the none of that really is is very important. As a matter of fact, it's too much foreground. So my next step after uh, deciding on kind of what I want the viewer to look at and bring their attention to my next step is going to the crop and it's up and it's right up here and it brings up the crop and there's different uh, aspect guides cropping guides you can see here they have uh, the this isn't the rule of thirds it's the and here are the overlays here you have the grid there's the rule of thirds, and it's hard to see on this image. You can barely make out the little lines on it. And then they have the fifths, diagonal, center, triangle, golden ratio, which is what I keep on mine. 
and then the spiral. And um, so that's the different guides you can use. And we are going to get rid of this this part of the image here. First, I, I'll do a 16 by 9 because I might put this on my website my um, as a portfolio image for my website. We'll see. So this is a 16 by 9, and I think I'm going to even get most of that blurry foreground down there out of the image and move this little guy to where, and this is just what I do. I, I've always heard that, and I don't know if it makes any difference if you look at it however you want to look at it. If you have like a, you know, an image or of an animal or a bird or something with eyes, and they're looking off into, you know, what whatever direction, add space, like this space right here, so the viewer will go, oh, I wonder what he's looking at over here. Whereas if you, you, like if I was to make it, you know, like this, and the squirrel, well, he, ha he hasn't got no room the way his, his eyes are going this way, where there's, it ends right here. So I always let them have more space. And same thing if you've got somebody walking, um, you want more space going um the direction they are going, do you want that to be more space? It's just a little something I do. Maybe you do it or maybe you don't. And about the, I sometimes use this mark here for the eyes and face or that one. And I don't think the foreground is very interesting. So I'm just going to use that right there in between his little eyes. And this, we're going to, we're going to go okay with the crop hit the inner and there it goes takes the crop and also i don't know you really can't tell if the if the uh, image is straight or not sometimes before um i'll use the uh, automatic straightening and uh, it's on auto i can just click that and so i guess it was straight so we'll enter the Hit the enter button and then we'll start the editing and another thing that i do that i did not used to do back when i was using lightroom classic uh, oh when i first got when lightroom first came out their auto button was terrible so i never used it but since they started making major improvements to everything i'll click that auto button and see what it gives me and it might give me a nice starting point or it may not it depends you know what it what it what it does so awesome most often i'll click the auto button and you can tell right off the bat it added a lot of contrast what else did it give us here okay it brought the exposure down added contrast highlights way down shadows are way up whites and the blacks to me that's eh, that's okay, but still, I, I want more focus on the little squirrely here. So, I'm not going to reset it completely. If you if you don't like it, you can hit the Command Z or Control Z on a Windows computer, a Windows computer, and uh, go back to your regular how it was. Or you can you can go back and hit this little I button down here. And it will bring up your um, image edits again. So we're going to auto. And if you don't like it, you can hit this and go to reset. Or I think it's this one right here. Yeah, reset edits. And it goes back to the, to the way. It even takes the crop away. So we'll take the crop back, though, and we'll go into here. And we'll maybe... Um, I'm thinking that I want I want to do some masking on the squirrel itself so I can bring out some of the features, maybe lighten it a little. I may keep this, um, the background dark like that. So, uh, but their masking tools have also improved immensely, immensely. So what we're going to do is get the masking out here 
and here's a subject. You can click that, and it will um, use AI, the power of AI, and we'll see if it selects the subject. And it did a, a really nice job selecting the subject. Now, you can also um, take away from, which I may do because right down in there... Um, it it uh, masked out or it masked in that uh, little in between spot p parts of his front paws there, and I want to I want to take that out. So what I'm going to do is click there, or let me see. Um, I want to take away from that mask you got to click on the mask there. Subtract from that mask, so I'll click that, and I'm just going to use my brush to do that. I have a, um, it's a Wacom tablet. It's not the, it's just the um, the smallest one. I think it's about 100 bucks or something like that. You can find them even cheaper than that. But uh, when I'm doing this type of work, I'll uh, turn on my Wacom tablet and use my pencil and I want to remove this area down in here where the grass is. Because, now let's see how that did. Uh, that should be okay. I might add that little piece of hair back to it right there. Let me... Uh, Decrease my brush size, which is the left bracket key. I didn't. I want to. Wanna, I don't want to erase. I want to add with my brush. Now we got the plus sign. I think hitting the option key. No, the option key don't do it. And let's uh, zoom out. Zoom back out to. I don't know. We'll see. We'll zoom out to. Okay, so that has the squirrel. Pretty well selected for the mask. And what do we want to do to the squirrel? Well, let's try. Does it? Does he need to be a little bit lighter? Maybe. I think that brings it up some, don't it? So we'll increase the exposure a little bit. Just bring your eye closer into the squirrel. How about contrast? No, I think it already added some good amount of contrast on the auto button. I don't think it needs that. I will, let me, I want to come in just a little bit closer. So you hold down on your um, trackpad and drag to the right or left. Just click and hold down and your, your hand will turn into that um, double arrow thing. And then you can drag and brings uh, zooms in and zooms out. Which is uh, which is I really like about that. I like that feature. I like having that feature. So uh, let me see. We brought the exposure up a little bit. What are we looking like so far? Hit the backslash key. That's the before. And that's the after. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe the. Ex I guess that's okay. I think that looks nice. It's very subjective when it comes to editing, but. Getting the tones right, the, the first, I forgot to mention this when I'm doing my edits. There's three, it's a three step process. Um, the first thing I like to try to do is get the tone corrections down, um, which I, which the auto button helps do that. And then you go from there and your, your um, white balance and your uh, light and exposure contrast and all that things for the correction and tone and then the color separation was was is basically I think what I'm what I'm doing now really um, in this instance there is not a lot of color in the image he's gray and kind of brown and then you got all the green and then the um, the gray in the tree here so I'm kind of working on separating his color. So that's what I'm kind of working on now. Um, and I may even go um, mask the when, I, when I'm finished with him, invert the mask and, and get everything back 
uh, here masked in and maybe decrease that uh, exposure a little bit. Or I may even do a radio mask on him and, and invert that too. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, whatever works best for you. Sometimes my edits, I'll even stop what I'm doing and take a break and walk away and then come back 15, 20 minutes later and see that I've either done too much this way or too much that way. So you can uh, remember to take a little break if your eyes get a little tired and come back and you can do some more editing. So what else do we need to do with the mask on this squirrel? And you can turn that mask on and off. And then as soon as you make some adjustments, the mask goes away. We're going to maybe add a tad more contrast on him. What does the highlights do? The highlight, we, I think bringing down the highlights will tame some of that brightness down a little bit. Um, the shadows, mm, that, yeah, that increases the, the light on it also. Now, the whites and the blacks, a little trick that I use, uh, you may use it too already. If you, if you hold down the option, now I'm on, a, I'm on a mic. I don't know what the option key is on a Windows. I used to have a Windows long years and years and years, long years ago. <laughs> I forgot what it is on the Windows computer, but it's the option. And then if you drag, well, it don't work when you got a mask going. It only works when you do your other when it's in the regular, when you're, when you're not in the masking, because I just tried it and it don't work. It will actually bring up a completely white screen when you hold down your mask button and it will show where you're uh, blowing out at and then you can make the adjustment. But just found out that it don't work when you have a mask on there. You just have to do it by eye. So I'll show you. I'll show you that. I'll go back to the edit tab in a minute and show you what I was talking about. So we'll add even more, add a little bit of dark there to it. And I think that looks pretty good. So let me go a little closer and see if I need to, I don't know, maybe mask, mask a little bit in the eye there and bring that out a tad. I don't know. Squirrels don't really have bright, colorful eyes like some other animals. Um, they kind of look like a rat face in a way. <laughs> Still cute, though. A little cute little pug nose. And This particular uh, gray squirrel had this brown, uh, brownish color here, and I don't know what caused that because it's the same way on, on his right side. I don't know what happened. Um, but anyway... I think that's pretty good. Let's go with the backslash key and there's the before and there's the after. I think that little squirrel is looking nice. Do we maybe need to add a little texture to the squirrel? Um, well, let's, let's see what we, what we might can do with the color, with a little texture here in the effects effects. Yeah, that does, that brings out some of that texture in his coat, his fur. How about some clarity? A little clarity won't hurt. I don't usually use dehaze at all. I don't usually do use, use the grain either. And, you know, this image may not even require me going into Photoshop because often I will just go right into Photoshop well, not right into, but I mean, after I make some edits and I see that it, I need to do something really uh, involved that I just can't get done in Lightroom, um, then I'll go into Photoshop. But this, this image probably is going to be okay just working in Lightroom. I think I can do everything I need to do right here. There isn't much color um, in him, so... You know, I could use the um, the point color here and try to bring out I don't know, maybe a little a little bit of the of the lighter colors. This is a new feature that they've added to. It's it's a it's really a, a cool way to you can narrow down you just click on your little eyedropper tool and you can really dial in a color 
that you want to um, work on. And I have an issue with this, too. You see right there where, when I, where my color dropper is? Well, this circle that is showing where that, that big magnifying where the pixel magnifier, I guess is what you call it. It's not showing the color of where my eyedropper tool is. Now it, it shows that over here. It shows what color I'm on and it moves around. Now, I don't know why it used to, that would also show the color, that round circle there on the screen, bottom right of my eyedropper. It would often show the color, but now it's just I don't know why it's just showing that same, and it shows that same color no matter what image I'm on. But I want to get this little brownish area right in here. And so that brought up the point color that I just clicked on, and now I can make adjustments in, um, in that one color area. on Wherever that color is, the adjustments that I make here will be seen and this whole tool, the point color tool, that could I could do a, a tutorial on that for a good hour explaining all of this. Hue shift, saturation, luminance, you probably know what the HSL is, but the range and the and the um, all of this, these little mark, these little uh, graphs down, these little bar tools down here that you can slide, they they help you dial it in even more. But that's too lengthy to go into so right I'm just going to go right into what I want to do here which is uh we'll see if that brightens those browns up and it does as you can see now you don't want to go all the way I mean that just really knocks it out of the park and I don't really I don't really main aim to knock anything so much so that it it looks over the top so you can see there's decreasing the that brown color and you can see that see right over here where it's moving and it's going up dark down as bright as I move the slider. So, and then you just go to Tay, however you, whatever you think looks best. And I think that brightened it up pretty good. Now does it, does it need more saturation? And I think that right there looks good. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm not going to worry about the hue because uh, I picked the, the the hue, that brownish, where I wanted to to work with. So I think that looks good. Let's see what that point color does with it off, on, off, on. And we'll, we'll zoom back out and you can tell even, you can tell even more. We could do the fit to screen, but let's, let's do it this way. You can really tell. Watch, look at the squirrel. Look at the colors on the squirrel here, the, the brown color there. Watch that. There it's off, on, off, on. That really helps a lot. Uh, is there any other color anywhere that really should be brought out? Uh Probably not a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, there is there is actually not a lot of color in this image. Just the uh, fact that this squirrel is so cute and the way he's looking. And also, I was practicing with my 100 to 500 mm lens that I got for wildlife. So I'm still learning to take... Um, and I just brought my luminance shift back down. I accidentally hit that. I think I had it about somewhere right around there. So I'm still learning how to use that lens. And I think that looks good on the let's do a whole overall. There's the before and there's the after. I think uh Mr. Squirrel's looking pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do, let me see what I wanna select. I want another mask. Um, let's let's select the background. Let's see what job it does on the background. Oh, look! It did. It did it. It did great. Perfect. It did the whole thing—the background and the foreground. 
So I think that's good. And it's asking for a little feedback here. And it's, yes, it's actually better than the results. So uh, in this instance, um, it looked at the whole um, image other than my main subject as being the background, even the foreground here. And that's that's perfect. That's that's really what I wanted. So we're going to go into the, oh, I need to go back into the, my edit. And then on my mask two, click on that. And I'll make the edits in the light. And I want to drop the exposure. And also I want to drop the saturation. And that's looking really nice. Uh, I wanted to drop the saturation. No, not the point color. The overall saturation. Now there we go. That's looking. That's looking pretty good. And the squirrel is the main focus. I don't believe, in all honesty, that this image needs anything else. Um, if I wanted to spend some more, I don't know. Y'all let me think. I'm, yeah, y'all let me think. Y'all let me know in the comments uh, if there's anything else you would you would have done to this image, and because um, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and sometimes what I will do after I make my initial edits and masking all and get all that done, I'll go back in and do some fine tuning overall exposure on the image now. I had brought it down to, it may need to come up just a tad more. So I'll just bring that up a little. Um, the highlights. Okay, the highlights. That's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. And here's what I will I wanted to show you about holding in the option key when you're working with your whites and your and your blacks. Well, I think it works on highlights, exposure, and contrast too. But I'm going to reset the whites by double clicking and I'm going to reset the blacks. Well, it just, when it turns to reset, you can, you can, the word actually turns to reset, you can just click that. Or you can double click the, the button, the little button itself. Now I'm going to hold the option key in and as I drag, the whole image gets black and to get rid of the, I uh, misspoke. I said the whole image gets white. It doesn't. It gets black. And when you can get rid of all the little whites in it, and I've got it all the way down, that's supposed to be a good white point. And the blacks, you can do the same. And I like to add some darkness into my blacks, shadows, and, and, and about like that. And that looks good. Now, see, that worked when I brought the whites all the way down affected the whole image. Actually, um, hmm, I didn't, I think it looks better with it. I don't really, really want it all the way down. It's not clipping anyway. The white, there's not enough white in the image. I don't think if I brought, all, yeah, if I brought all the way up, it does start to clip. But I think that little speck of fur on the gray, on the eastern gray needs, needs to be brought up a little underneath there, that white. But anyway, that's probably what I would do um, in a, in a, um, if I'm going to use it, I'd probably go back in and, and adjust that in another. Well, it won't take but just a second. Let's go with a new mask. And what I'll do this time, I'm just going to use my brush. And uh, let me bring up the, let me bring him in a little closer here. So I can't use the um, hold feature. Yeah, I can. I got to hold in my space bar to do it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my brush and I'm just going to create a mask right in here over this fur. And do that. And 
let's do some white. Let's bring up the exposure and see if that does. Ooh, that's too much. That's too much. And also, that feathering is not too good on the... So this may not work, you know, because you can see, you know, that's crazy looking there. <laughs> but if I want, if I do just a little bit and come back in and maybe it's getting it like that. Now, see, this might be a task for dodging and burning in Photoshop to bring that up. But I think a little tiny bit don't, don't hurt. Let's back this out. I think that looks nice. Um, does that need some down there? Probably not because it's in the shadow area here. So is that actually. But I think that little white puff there is handsome on the eastern gray. All right, we are going to close it out. I think this is long enough probably too long and um i apologize if it is but we shall let me see one last thing i kind of like to do is add a vignette and sometimes i will add one with a circular mask i'll do i want to do it this time With a radial gradient or not, I just think I'll just do it with the, let's see what um, what the vignette looks like with uh, Lightroom's vignette. So that's too much, but we'll open up the feather here. I like to keep that at about 80. Um... And if you can't really tell, just bring it down a whole bunch until you can see what you're doing there. The roundness, I like to bring it down about like that, midpoint, down some. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll just bring it, we'll just back it off because you're really not supposed to be able to, to tell that it's even a vignette. Just a touch to focus the viewer's eye where you want to go right there. And I think that I think that looks good. Let's do one more before and after how cute is that little squirrel before after all right guys hey if you have any questions any comments anything like that please leave them in the and leave them underneath the um leave them in the description under the video here and if you would please do me a favor uh, like the video and of course I uh, will also encourage you to subscribe for more great editing photo content. And uh, I mentioned earlier in a video last week about trying to get out again for a, a waterfall shoot, and I uh, uh, aim to do that pretty soon. So, guys, thank you again for watching. I appreciate all of you, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you in the next one. Peace.